Hello, very good evening to all. Hope you have all gone through the video that I have shared just before. And that video will give you a brief idea about what is reciprocating pump and how it will work. And that's our today's topic, reciprocating pump. And we will be discussing in detail about its working, work done and its uh, amount of discharge like that. The As we have discussed for the centrifugal pump, we have to get do some problems from the reciprocating pump. Here is the slide which I have already discussed while we are studying centrifugal pump. The pumps is mainly classified into dynamic pressure pump and positive displacement pump. In dynamic pressure pump, we have to study detail about centrifugal pump. In and a proper line turbine pump, we will study just uh, some uh, theory on we need it. Uh, it won't ask in general. The second classification is the positive displacement pump. In that, we have to study reciprocating and rotary pumps. And among that reciprocating we have to study in detail. In reciprocating there are many two types of reciprocating pump, piston pump and diaphragm pump. And we will be study in detail about piston type reciprocating pump. And these uh, gear lobe, screw, vein pump we will study just, uh, so we will study just working only. No problems, everything won't be there. So today we will be discussing in detail about piston pumps. This is the schematic representation of the video that you have already seen. I will just introduce what are the main components of a reciprocating pump. You will get a question from for the exam that to draw and explain the main components of a reciprocating pump and it's working. So as a centrifugal pump it will got a suction pipe and it will got a delivery pipe and there are two non-return valves are there. Non-return valves means there are flow in only one direction. So here is a suction side there is a valve in the delivery side there is a valve and there is a piston connecting rod and there is a crank. The crank is connected to the motor. The motor when the motor rotates crank will be rotating in the circular motion. The circular motion is converted into linear motion of the piston with the help of a connecting rod and a piston rod. As the piston move front and back, they will create a negative pressure. Hope uh, everyone has used your syringe while playing in your childhood. You know that how a syringe works. The same principle is working here when a piston is moving backward direction a vacuum is created. So it will try to pull the topward valve in the downward direction. Again it will try to pull the valve in the upward direction. So what will happen? The water in the delivery pipe won't come back but water in the suction pipe or water or air whatever there is in the suction pipe it will enter to the space between the piston and the cylinder. So as the piston go more forward Whatever there is in the suction pipe, it will be just entered into the piston cylinder arrangement. And when the piston reaches the top dead center, the suction process is completed. Now the piston will try to move from right to left. Then whatever there is in the piston will try to go outside. And the piston is going from uh, right to left, what uh, the air or water is there, it will try to push the valve. When the suction valve is pushed, it is begin to close and it will remain in a closed position. Then it will try to push the delivery valve. When the delivery valve is pushed, it will open and the whatever this is between the piston and cylinder, it will be gone through the delivery pipe. So, a negative pressure is created water or air is sucked between the piston cylinder arrangement and towards the delivery stroke whatever is there it will be gone through the delivery pipe. So that is the working of the reciprocating pump. 
And for similar as the centrifugal pump, we will have two types of head, suction head and delivery head. And suction head is defined as the central line of connecting the piston rod or the center of the piston to the water level in the sump. And delivery head can be defined as the distance from the center of the piston to the top of the delivery pipe. Now we will discuss how much water is gone through the delivery pipe in every complete rotation of the crank or for a one complete rotation of the crank how much water is gone through the pipe so when the piston is going from top to bottom water is entering inside the pipe how much water will be entering inside the pipe you know the shape of the piston cylinder it's a circular shape and what is the volume of the cylinder pi r square h or area into height of the cylinder area of cross section into height of the cylinder will give the volume of the cylinder that much amount of water is trapped between the piston head and in the cylinder wall that is the amount of water entering into the cylinder when the piston is moving from right to left whatever water is there it will be delivered to the delivery pipe so the water inside the cylinder is area of the cylinder into length of stroke how much the piston is moving the piston is starting from here and it is stopped here the piston moved this much so this much water is entered into the cylinder and that much water is moved away from the cylinder there is some water always there between the piston cylinder arrangement that is called clearance some water is there so how much piston is the moving to and fro that is called the stroke length so area of cross section into stroke length will be the amount of water moving through the discharge valve in every complete rotation of the crank so for one complete rotation area into stroke length that is l will be the water entering into the delivery pipe and there is uh, when the crank is moving from point a to point c the piston is going from left to right that is called a suction stroke in the suction stroke there is no water is discharging through the delivery valve and the piston is or crank is moving from point c to point a the piston is moving from right to left that is called a delivery stroke in the delivery stroke the water is moving through the pipe so only in the delivery stroke water is moving so for one complete rotation the amount of water will be area cross section of the cylinder into length of stroke so we have got the data is d is the diameter of the cylinder area cross section of the cylinder can be written as pi by 4d square if r is the radius of the crank we are writing the stroke length as area sorry uh, radius of the crank the uh, when the crank is moving from point a to point c the piston is moving from top dead center to bottom dead center so the distance moved by the piston will be equal to ac where ac is equal to two times the crank radius so length of stroke is equal to two times the crank radius and uh, volume of water trapped in a single stroke equal to area into length of stroke a into l or pi by 4d square into l will be the amount of water in, in a single stroke suppose the motor connected to this crank is running at n rpm you know what you mean by rpm rotations per minute so if you are multiplying the amount of water delivered in one revolution we will get the value as a into l into n that is a is equal to meter square that is equal to meter meter cube into rotation per minute we will use the meter cube per minute will be our answer in normally we will be writing the discharge equation as meter cube per second so if we are substituting the value of n in rpm we will be getting the discharge as meter cube per minute 
if we substitute the value of n in rps rps rotation per second for converting rotation per minute to rotation per second just divide it by 60 so if you are substituting the value of n in rps you will be getting the discharge in normal unit that is meter cube per second so the discharge of a centrifugal pump for its initial no it's a discharge of a reciprocating pump is given by a l n by 60 where n is in rpm we are converted to rps by dividing by 60. so all the conversion is there so just study the equation for the discharge as q is equal to a l n by 60. Now, next we have to calculate the work done by the reciprocating pump. Work done is equal to what is the work done? The reciprocating pump is taking some water and it is delivering to here. So, if you are giving a 10 Newton of water and this lifted to a height, or weight into displacement will use the work done. Similarly, work done per second equal to weight of water lifted into total height through which water is lifted the height through which water is lifted is equal to suction head plus delivery head yeah, the water is available in the sump that is taken to a height of hs plus hd will gives the total height of water lifted hs plus hd total height of water lifted weight of water we got the equation for discharge q is equal to meter cube per second what is the unit of weight unit of weight is newton how to convert meter cube to newton for converting meter cube to kilogram we will be multiplying with the density for converting kilogram to newton we will be multiplying with the g so rho g a l n by 60 will give us the weight of water lifted so total work done is equal to weight into distance moved so rho j l n by 60 into hs plus hd will give us the work done per second Normally, we will be writing work done per second joule or watts. Uh, we are specifying the power in kilowatts. So, get, for getting kilowatts, we will be dividing it by 1000. So, total power is equal to rho g l n by 60 h plus h d divided by 60 already there. In 2000, 60,000 will give us the total work done by the reciprocating pump. So next is the work done and uh, power good driver double acting reciprocating pump. So it will take uh, some time. Actually, the video time is allowed only 15 minutes as it's a trial version of recorder. So I'll be stopping here. So we have discussed uh, what is the reciprocating pump, its classification, how they are coming, and just uh, discussed about how the reciprocating pump is working. Then we have discussed about how the we are writing the equation for discharge q in a l n by 60 and next we have discussed the uh, work done work done is equal to amount of water weight of water into total distance moved by the water so weight is given by discharge into rho into g will give the weight of the water and distance moved equal to hs plus hd so total power we have calculated in kilowatt so remaining topic we will be discussing in uh, next class hope you got a brief idea about reciprocating pump uh, your comments and thoughts are conveyed through personal messages or email and also go through uh, youtube videos for reciprocating pump animations okay thank you see you tomorrow